workshop is very significant for the Ministry of Rural Development and Local Government for a number of reasons, which include the following. It aligns to the approved draft policy for local government reform 2016 as it pertains to the expansion of local government responsibilities in relation to both disaster management and social services delivery. It also aligns with the role of the DMU units as it relates to the Sendai Framework for Disaster Risk Reductions 2015-2030 and the priorities for action, particularly priority two, strengthening disaster risk governance to manage disaster risk, and priority four, enhancing disaster preparedness for effectiveness response and to build back better in recovery, rehabilitation, and reconstruction. The municipal corporations, by nature of their relationship and closeness to communities, are expected to have greater responsibility for the delivery of social services seamlessly, which is expected to contribute to the improvement, generally, in the quality of life of our citizens. The devolution of these responsibilities is expected to take place on a phase basis, with the first phase involving the general grants facility. Presently, both ministries are working assiduously towards making this a reality. This workshop is aimed at improving our disaster response and recovery efforts as it relates to the general grants disbursement for disaster relief. It is anticipated that it will facilitate a more effective, integrated, and collaborative approach to disaster response and relief, efforts compatible with our local needs and expectations, and also be in alignment with the local government reform policy 2016 implementation strategy. As such, I wish you all a successful workshop which is part of our disaster preparedness mechanism and anticipate great benefits to our disaster response efforts. Thank you. One of the reasons why we are having this workshop today is really so that we can see how we can move towards um, having a better response. We have been coming under a lot of heavy scrutiny as to how fast we respond to, our, to victims of disasters and uh, and that we, have be, we are taking too long and it's too slow. And we really want to make a difference in the person's um, or the victim's lives as it happens and not necessarily um, a month or two later to provide some relief. All right. We at the ministry have recognized that we have several deficiencies in our, res our response to disaster situations. We depend largely on volunteers with informative in the ministry and uh, the funds that we utilize are really the funds that are allocated for the other um, grants that we have in the ministry, um, such as um, public assistance, um, pensions, um, those kinds of other things. And we really want to make sure that we have the revenue or the, the funds really to direct it to, um, straight to the persons who may be affected. So we do envisage that this step towards the regional corporations assuming more control um, over the disbursement of relief directly to affected persons is really a step in the right direction. And I look forward to the critical discussions that we plan to have here today as we go through how we can really um, collaborate with the ministry so that we could better um, reach persons as they are affected on a more timely basis. I have recognized over the last couple of years what we do, the Disaster Management Unit and Ministry of Local Government by extension are the first responders, yeah? So what you all do is you all go out into the field and usually we get our clearance to go into the field when you tell us that we can go into the field. When it is safe to do so, when first responders have cleared the area of any um, obstacles or any challenges that we might face, then we go into the field. And usually, especially in the last two disasters, which was very huge, it took quite a while. There were some areas that was underwater for almost two weeks to, to three weeks. Yeah, Rishi? 
and we could not go in. And what we have in the ministry is food support. So imagine you're impacted by disaster. All your food has been destroyed, and you are just there marooned. You cannot come out, and very likely, no one can get to you, and you are hungry. And you are waiting on the Ministry of Social Development and Family Services to bring food to you. So what we have realized is that this just can't work. We have people out there, it's a traumatic experience for those of us who would have experienced disaster. It's a traumatic experience, really, when the water starts to come up, and far less when it hits your, your, your bed, so you, could no, you no longer have a place to sleep, and it, starts to, it, it continues to rise. So what the, the, the intention really is to bring about greater effectiveness and efficiency in the system so that we could respond in a more meaningful manner. So relief as it relates to the disaster is a total sum of $10,000. Now we also have household where someone could come in and apply as a general needs. But for the purposes of disaster, and that amount are ordinarily 6,000, but the purposes of disaster, recognizing that person may have suffered significant loss, is extended to the sum of $10,000. Ordinarily, um, one would have this outline need, but where there's a disaster, where disaster is concerned, that is not taken into consideration. What is, what is most significant is that you would have ex experienced a significant loss, and it's to offer some measure of relief. Now, if you notice, the, the items there, there is a figure quoted. For example, you'll see a refrigerator, and that sum of 4,000 really speaks to no more than 4,000. So the intention is not to replace, you might have a $2 luxury fridge costing $10,000, it's not necessary to replace the item, right? But to offer some measure of relief. Um, we saw in particular at uh, the last, those floodings, a lot of requests for, say, a refrigerator for freezers. And free freezers, in fact, does not come under the list of items there. Because what we really look at is the basic items, which will be deemed to be um, items that every household will need as opposed to what you, what you would want. So you see, there's a stove, living room set, dining room set, washing machine. There were years going back where washing machine was not considered a necessity. So we would find as time progresses, things have changed. Right, so clothing. This is also, um, we offer some relief. It's at a maximum of $1,000 per person, regardless of age. School supplies, again, maximum payable. We have it in two categories, depending on where, what level the child is at. For a child at secondary school, maximum payable is $1,000 and $700 for a child at primary school. And then again, that's, remind, that's a reminder. We are not replacing by way of cash, but this is an invoice system. The DNA, Terrence Maxim, Disaster Management Coordinator, um, Samuel Aventil. With regards to the DNA forms, we use a particular type of form. I think everybody here has their own forms, right? So if you are coming to, for us to fill out a particular DNA Dana form, then we should have access to that Dana form. I don't know if you all are going to make provisions for us to be able to have that form, so then the cap information we capture would be able to be passed on to you. And then again, we go to the fact that if you're out in the field, then we have all those forms to follow out to also, eh? That we get the information from you all. We get the information as it relates to the person who was affected, the address, the ID card number, what losses they suffered. So it was in the context of doing one process, not for the DMU to fill a form, and then to fill a separate form to satisfy our requirements, it will be one document that is filled that the information gets to us so that we could proceed to process the grant. It is not to do multiple documents. And in case in, um, in 2017, the ODPM was tasked with the responsibility of consolidating all of these forms that we have. There was one, this form was sent to them there was one that was developed by the ministry and also sent to them where they were supposed to consolidate all of the forms so that there's one 
form to treat with disaster? Um, if there are clients who is compromised, for example, a fire, will they have access to the tree grants? The minor, the sanitary, and the wiring? Good. In the events of um, disaster, like, a f like a, for example, a fire, they would have access to the minor house repairs to the maximum of 20,000 because fire is considered to be a disaster. They also have access to the house wiring assistance and they would have access to the sanitary plumbing in the event that they have a um, uh, outhouse. And also we can provide that grant for um, if their toilets were impacted by the fire and so the major reason for this forum is to remove some of the inefficiencies that they have. Yeah? And one of the reasons, as I indicated before, you all are in the field. You are the first responders. The process is, and this is how we contradict ourselves right through as government ministries. The Ministry of Local Government will go out there. The house is flooded. There's debris in the house. There's mud. The Ministry of Health will tell you to clean it as quickly as possible and get rid of the old stuff. And then the Ministry of Social Development is telling you to keep the item because you want to see it. Yeah? So we can't continue to contradict ourselves like that. The intention here today is that your eyes and ears is what we would rely on. So you go and you see, we, uh, at the meeting we had, we spoke about pictures. We know that it would not always be practical. But at least you go and you see and you sign and indicate to us that these people were affected and we will be using what you see and what you hear and what you document for us as the opportunity to pay these people or to provide relief to them on a timely basis. It is to remove that two weeks you talk about. Yeah? We don't want to um, continue to be doing that year in, year out because we are going to provide relief long after the fact which is not really practical when people are affected at a disaster time. Yeah?